welcome to the Wong Way Street Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Wong, and this podcast is dedicated to self-discovery and personal growth that will help you find your personal GPS. Life, as we know, can be unpredictable. And when the path we thought we were meant to follow takes unexpected turns, it's time to recalibrate those turns and discover endless possibilities. Join us on the Wong Way Street Podcast today to find your true direction. Let's dive in. Hey, welcome back to another episode. So the last two winters, I decided to test the waters of being a snowbird. Now, the obvious reason was to get away from the dreary winter weather. I'm able to deal with November, December because the holidays keep you busy enough to be affected by the cold. But man, when January comes around, it is depressing. The holiday decorations come down. It's dark. It's dreary. Being in a warmer place in the winter really does affect your overall well-being. After all, the sun feels good, the palm trees surround you with beauty, the ocean waves put you in a zen state. I notice that I'm more in tune with nature, the birds, the ocean, and just appreciating all that surrounds me. I feel more grounded. Now, the second reason for my decision is actually my mother. My mom is now 88 years old. And thankfully, she's physically active and mentally stable. It is hard to see her friends struggling at their age. But one day, I know that she won't be here. And I never want to think back, what more could I have done to improve her quality of life? Instead, I say to myself, what can I do to possibly make her last decade of life be full of goodness? Especially that she has no health issues and she's pretty darn fit at the age of 88. So I decided that I would take my mother with me as well, and she would reap the benefits of warmer weather, as well as to be closer to her brother. They used to only see each other maybe once a year during Thanksgiving, but now they've been able to spend one to two months together of of the year. On the days that I am with them, I listen to them reminisce on the old days of when they were in China. Their childhood experiences were quite different. While my childhood was relatively stable and consistent, My uncle and my mother's childhood was trying to survive during World War II. Their daily life was lived in a world of challenges of survival. My uncle's journey was actually remarkable. He left China at the age of 14 years old and traveled alone to Ellis Island. Could you imagine that at the young age of 14? Despite the thoughts of fear leaving at such a young age, he had such an astonishing memory. He was able to recall details from his past with such clarity. His ability to recount the events of his childhood never fails to impress me. In contrast, my own memories from childhood seems hazy in comparison. While I struggle to remember even the simplest of things, my uncle and mom can vividly recount their experiences during war. And I wondered why that was. And I realized it's because every day brought new challenges and uncertainties for them. My childhood was stable and routine. Their childhood was a daily need to survive. So no doubt that left a lasting imprint on their minds. But that being said, their recollections of childhood was a reminder of what they endured during those difficult times. I am so grateful for the lessons and the perspective that they have provided Their stories serve as a reminder of the importance of resilience, perseverance, and gratitude in the face of adversity. Now seeing them together in their late 80s, it's so nice to see them walking together, making dumplings, playing mahjong together, watching movies together. And in the moment, it might just seem like any other normal day to them. I know that one day my mom will be happy that she had this time with him. See, my mom would not decide to do this on her own. She would only travel down south if someone took her. So I'm so glad I did these test runs with her to see how it would go. For her to be able to take walks outside on sunny days and to do exercises outside. For her to spend time with her brother and her sister-in-law. For her to spend time with me. For her to basically enjoy her time without the challenges of New York where she has to be alert of her surroundings every day. What I am sure is that one day, when she's not here, I will feel good knowing that I did this for her and also for myself. There is nothing more satisfying than to provide something for someone that you know they will not provide for themselves. 
Coincidentally, this Sunday, there was a segment that aired on CBS Sunday Morning, and it was about a film director who made a short film called Gruff on YouTube. He took paper and cut each scene, each character, and every single detail down to the leaves. It took him three years to create this masterpiece. He did it as a way to cope with his dad's passing. Watching this segment reminded me of the power of storytelling as a means of processing emotions and preserving memories. Just like the filmmaker used his art to honor his father's memory, I shared my own story today as a tribute to the precious time that I spent with my mother and the lessons that I learned along the way. I highly encourage you to watch the CBS Sunday Morning segment and then jump over to YouTube to watch the nine minute short film. I really hope it gets nominated for next year's Oscars. I'll leave the links in the show notes. It's a beautiful testament to the enduring bond between parent and child. And I have no doubt that it will resonate with many of you. Unlike the film though, Curry did not reconcile his differences with his father, but with paper, he created hits Hollywood ending. This film was my way of kind of writing a narrative that I didn't experience, which was spending more time with my dad as he was passing away, Mm -hmm. reconciling differences that we had. Everyone has a story. Everyone has hurt. Everyone has joy. And sometimes you just have to be next to them to understand that. Some people don't say the things we want. And some people don't say much at all. But when you run from the quiet, you might miss what they've been saying all along.